What's going on YouTube, Geosno right here. So this is going to be a very interesting series in which I'm going to show you how to create a jailbreak from scratch using a TFP0 kernel exploit like Sockport or Time Waste or whatever, for iOS 13 or iOS 12 and stuff like that. So I'm going to try to explain most of the things that go into a jailbreak and how to create one from scratch. Now in this video we're going to get started with you know the exploit, the project, how to set up your machine, what you need and stuff like that and we're going to work our way up into the more advanced topics. Now a couple of important things you need to keep in mind is the jailbreak central form that I have created is this one here and there is actually a jailbreak development section in here where I'm going to post code and you know tutorials and stuff like that so definitely check it out jailbreak.fc365.info then there is also this repo that I created on github iOS jailbreak development which is basically going to contain a lot of important things like you know offsets and tools and exploits and stuff that you need for various uh, jailbreak development projects and then of course there is my blog which is this one here, in which I also talk a lot about iOS hacking and sandbox and, you know, macOS and jailbreaks demystified and stuff like that. Uh, the jailbreaks demystified in here is actually a pretty clear article, in my opinion, that should actually explain how things work in a jailbreak and how things are signed. I wrote this a couple of uh, months ago, back in 2019, I think, or 18. So it's a little bit outdated by now, but it's definitely useful if you want to get started. So that's basically it with the resources. Let's move on a little bit to the exploit. In order to create a jailbreak, you're going to need an exploit that works for your iOS version. Right now, iOS 13.4 is the latest version available, with 13.3.1 still signed. For these two versions, there's no TFP0 kernel exploit available, but for the rest of them, you know, below that, there are exploits available. Now, we're going to start with iOS 12 devices and work our way up to iOS 13. The reason for that being that there are many freely available exploits and resources and stuff like that for the iOS 12, but not as many for iOS 13 for the moment because iOS 13 jailbreaks are relatively new. Now we're going to use Sockport in this video and in this series for a while then we're going to move on to this one in here which is Time Waste created by the same person Jake James and the difference is that of course the exploits target different vulnerabilities. This one is found by Brennan Azad of Google Project Zero and works on 13.3 and lower and this one only works on iOS 12.4 and 12.2 and lower and the vulnerability was found by Ned Williamson. So we're going to use this one in here for the moment. Now I'm going to try to explain a little bit what is TFP0 and why we need a kernel vulnerability with that. Now TFP0 stands for kernel task port or task for PID0 and PID0 is basically the kernel. On Unix-like systems everything has a PID. Now if you go ahead and here on your activity monitor on your Mac you can see that every single process on the system has a PID and it says in here the PID for the activity monitor for example is this one here uh, 1059 but if you go ahead and here on the lowest one you can see that the kernel task has the PID 0 and then launch D has the PID 1. These never change. These two always have the PID 0 and PID 1 and PID 0 is basically the kernel itself. So TFP 0 or task for PID 0 means basically getting the task port for the kernel because the kernel is PID 0. Now once you get the exploit like this one in here you can see that it comes as an Xcode project which means that if you want to be able to create a jailbreak yourself you do need to have Xcode. There's no no way around it, no way to do it on Windows, please don't ask me about how you can do this on Windows or on Linux because it's not possible. You need to have a macOS machine, either virtual or of course a real one or a Hackintosh or whatever, but you have to run somehow macOS and you do need a fairly newer version of Xcode. Now you can see that the exploit itself comes in an Xcode project format so we can actually open it and um, yeah, Xcode will start automatically and if you have the device connected you can even compile it and run it, only that you can't. Uh, by default you you're not able to compile it at all because if you select your device for example I'm going to select this 4k device and you press play for compilation you get a build fail. Now this can be very frustrating if you're just getting started with jailbreak development because most of the times the errors that Xcode provides aren't exactly very clear. So basically in this case the very first thing you need to check once you download the exploit if you're working directly on the project is the signing status. You have to actually check this one in here and press enable and in here on the team you have to make sure that you select your Apple ID. Now if you don't have anything in there you have to go here to preferences and of course sign in by pressing plus with your Apple ID and password. In that case you will be able to sign things with your computer. Now you can see that we do have a team and we do have the automatically managing for the signing actually set up in here but we still get errors and we still cannot compile. The reason for that being that we cannot have this bundle identifier in here. This is the bundle identifier used by Jake James when he created the exploit project but we can't have the same one in here. 
here. So we're going to have to rename it to anything we want. So com dot geo dot osiris let's say this should basically fix the problem you can see that we get a new provisioning profile and there we go and now we would be able to actually run the project on the phone as you can see it's compiling pretty fine now you may get this yellow warnings in here you can actually compile with warnings you cannot compile with errors the errors have the uh, red exclamation mark and the um, warnings are these things in here. Now, okay, you got the exploit set up and it would probably run very fine on the device. Let's actually select the lowest version possible to be iOS 12 because this exploit doesn't support iOS 9 anyways. So we wanna go here and say iOS 12.0 and it should be universal. I'm going to disable landscaping here and that should be it. Now we can test the exploit and we should be able to get TFP0 with this exploit on the device because that's what the exploit does. It doesn't do anything more, you don't get root, you don't get jailbreak, you don't get anything else, you just get the kernel task port and we can start from there to build our jailbreak. But first we need to make sure that we do get TFP0 and we try. Now you can see here that the installation is basically going on and now it says running. I'm going to see here in the console, which you can actually view by toggling it from this button here, you can see exactly what's going on. So um, we're waiting for it to actually run and then you get this error in here. Now this is again very frustrating if you're just getting started with jailbreak development, but it's a common error. If you get could not launch uh, the name of the project and it says in here verify the developer app, you actually have to go to settings on the phone, to general and then scroll all the way down to device management, press your Apple ID and press trust so that you will be able to run your apps and press OK in here and just try again. And at this point it should compile fine. Now these are actually pretty common errors that you get with building an Xcode project, but of course they're nonetheless very frustrating. Now the project started at this point and if everything works fine, I should be actually able to get the FP0. You can see here that it says that the uh, exploit got the offsets for iOS 12. And what do you see? We do have TFP0. It says in here TFP0 and we get a value. And that value is actually valid. So we were also able to read and write something, which means that the uh, TFP0 works. Now what this TFP0 does is to basically allow you to read and write to the kernel memory. Basically the memory of PID0. Otherwise your process, your program, wouldn't be able to read and write to the kernel memory. They're protected, they're separated, and you can only read and write to some other processes memory if you do have the task port for that, which of course the exploit gives because there is no way to actually get it by default. Apple doesn't allow that. So we use an exploit, we exploit a vulnerability in order to be able to get the uh, TFP0 or the kernel task port to be able to perform reads and writes to the memory and of course apply patches. So this is basically it with setting up the uh, exploit. It does work as you can see from here. We don't don't have any errors compiling it and running it so at this point we're basically able to start coding and you know working our way up getting root escaping sandbox and so on but this will have to wait for the next video because this video is getting too long so yeah that's basically it for the moment check out the jailbreak central forum in here for more details there's the jailbreak development section check out my repo in here link in the description down below for the ios 12 and ios 13 patches and offsets and exploits and of course check out the uh, blog in here at geosnow.github.io Thank you for watching, this is part 1, see you soon on part 2.